You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. you. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 508. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hope you're having a great day. Yes, thank you very much. If you've ever found this show valuable to you, you've gotten good information, or it's helped you fly or avoid a crash, please share it with someone so we can advance this industry as a whole. Yes. Special thank you to our sponsors, who is that big bald-headed guy sitting next to me. <laughs> and uh, you can check out his Ouch. book at livinthedronelife.com. Actually, I'm not. No, don't go to liveinthedronelife.com. I think I own liveinthedronelife.com. Do you really? Yeah, I should probably like put the book link up there. No, go to droneubook.com. Um, I should check if I own that. I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> if not, and yeah. this gets published, somebody else will own it. Oh no. Yeah, so you I better should check find, as soon as we're done that. here. Yeah. So droneubook.com. Check it out. <laughs> um, but guys, today we're going to be talking about something really important. We haven't been talking about it before, and that is regulatory grade data. It's kind of bringing the macro view of can the industry grow? Well, yes, it can, but it kind of depends on this one thing, which is the quintessential difference between the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So you're going to want to stick around to learn what that significant difference is, what it means in regards to regulatory grade data, and why that's important to the industry as a whole. So again, thank you for listening. Please re re give us a review, give us a share. But Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that cue? Hi, my name is Stephen Griffin. I just purchased a Phantom 4, and I'm wondering what all jobs can I do with a Phantom 4? I want to get into this, and I still need to get my test, but I'm just trying to gear myself towards the stuff I'd like to do. Ultimately, I'd love to get into inspection of cell towers and, and wind generators, but I know that's not with this drone. But I want to work my way up. So my question is, what are the best jobs to do other than real estate? Cool. Thanks, Stephen, for the question. Thanks for writing in, guys. If you have your question ready to go, ask DroneU.com. Get them in so that we can answer the question that a lot of other people are thinking as well, not just you. So be the brave one. Give us a ring. Get your question in. And if you're like a lot of other people and you want to turn that passion into profit, seriously, read the book. It's the most succinct formula for doing so. That being said, um, I just want to say really quickly, um, when he talks about cell tower inspection jobs, when he talks about some of these other types of jobs, um, cell tower jobs are one of those things that you do mapping, right? You map the cell tower. You're supposed to showcase what production equipment is on the tower, what radio equipment is there. You're supposed to showcase barcodes. Like it's the, it's the whole nine yards. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk today about regulatory grade data because the Phantom 4 cannot map the cell tower accurately enough to get data that the business can act on. Okay. So yeah, I, maybe you're going to go into it, but regulatory grade data. What Enlighten is us. regulatory grade data? You may have heard us talk about it a little bit on the last podcast with drone base when we had Nick Osgood on and he talked about it a little bit. It's enterprise grade data. So in order for businesses to make decisions like insurance based decisions, um, in decisions as a whole, they have to have a level of data that can be held up in court. It can be held up against testing. It can be held up against other things. Um, and that means what? Higher resolutions? What specifically does that mean? Give me a second. Okay. Um, it, and, I'll, and I'll get into that. But okay. this, this data, let me give you the example, right? Um, if we have, uh, let, let, let's, let's take this really simple, right? My fiance's family lives in Colorado Springs. And their okay. neighborhood looks like someone took a machine gun to it. I'm serious. What do you mean? Hail damage. Oh, hail damage. And a lot of people bought that. Um, some people have what's called a hardy plank. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think it's the best. Uh, it's the best crap you could put on your house, if you ask me. Um, it's a. It, what it is is it's wood shavings and concrete mixed together to create siding for your house. Huh, okay. Those people didn't have nearly as much hail damage as the people that put the plastic on their house. Interesting. Um, and when I say it's riddled full of holes, it really is. And, you know, Drone Base is talking about how, you know, they're, put, they're adding a lot of new jobs. And roof inspections are a big deal then. Right. And in order to make decisions 
on these roof inspections with drones, they've got to be able to get data that's good enough that a human person doesn't have to make sure the drone got the good data. Okay. Meaning that the company already pays someone to go out there and inspect these, these houses, the roofs. If a drone doesn't do that cheaper than the person, there's no point in using the drone. If the person has to cross check that the drone stuff is good, there's no point in using the drone. Okay. So when they do these inspections, if there's like a swamp cooler or a heater on the top of the house, mm -hmm. they need to know what kind it is. Sure. If it's broken, they've got to replace gotta it. Replace it. It's sure. got to have a value, right? right? The roof has a value. Right. If they get sued by the homeowner for not providing adequate resources to replace the roof, right? The person is going to question the data they got. So on some level, using drones to do some of this work is a little bit um, idealistic even. It's kind of a theoretical thing unless you get a high enough quality to, get, to actually do it right. That is correct. Now, the Phantom 4 Pro is the first step in the direction where we can even get enterprise or regulatory grade data. This regulatory grade data is something that we can fly a Phantom up, take a picture of a barcode, fly a whole house and map it down to a centimeter. You know, it was funny. Um, Nick was saying centimeter grade data. And he said, you know, a lot of these, these, these mapping things are just a lot of hype. Right. He's like, they don't talk about what centimeter grade data. Is that a hundred centimeters or is that one centimeter? You know, and in <laughs> details, details. Um, and in order to make actionable data, they have to have accurate data. Okay. So these older drones with the smaller sensors are not able to really map accurately enough. And we've known that, you know, for a while. So that is the distinction. It's the size of the... The sensor? The size really... of the sensor that provides for adequate enough resolution okay. to create accurate enough mapping and detailed data. Okay. So in order for, let me give you the example. In order for BNSF to say, we're going to use drones on every one of our vehicles along all of our track, it's got to be able to autonomously get the data, get accurate enough data that's actionable. Right. Because again, if they didn't get accurate enough data out of the drone, and an accident happened, and they went to the data, and they said, well, the data is missing. There was clearly, clearly a crack there, and our software didn't pick it up. See Somebody's what I'm liable for that. Exactly. That's regulatory-grade data. Seems like it always comes down to liability. That's why it's the just FAA, the world we live in, I that's suppose. I think that's why the FAA didn't add the insurance thing into the commercial mm. license. But anyway, so regulatory-grade data is data that is accurate enough that we can measure off of. We can actually do these volumetric measurements. And the Phantom 4 Pro is the first quadcopter that really has a large enough sensor that we can actually get that, that level of data. And we still have some room to grow. This isn't, sure. this isn't the end-all, be-all. But... The Phantom 4, to answer his question, can do many, many, many commercial jobs. Aerial photography and videography is covered in those. Mapping is not. Right. Okay. Phantom 4 Pro, mapping is a great tool. Because I would think for things like uh, cell tower inspections, even roof inspections, like the size of the Phantom is a nice size. It just comes down to can the sensor handle what you're trying to accomplish. Exactly. As opposed to trying to get a big old beast out there that's not really necessary. Right? Yep. So it's, it's, but it's working in the right direction, is what it, it sounds like. It is. There's yes. a big jump from the 4 to the 4 Pro. No, it totally is. And the 4 Pro, you know, the fact that DJI isn't even making the Phantom 4 anymore, I think is a big indicator of that. Like, hey, we've yeah. made this big jump already. You guys don't need this. Just buy this one. Um, I think that's a huge indicator. But now let's talk about this. All right. Regulatory grade data, enterprise level data. If enterprises, the large corporations in America, in America, cannot get this data, do you think we're going to see the drone industry grow more here in the United States? Not if they can't get the data. Exactly. We need to be able to get it, yeah. Because with the regulatory hurdles right now, the FAA and the airspace waivers and all of that, and not being able to get the data, they're not going to make the jump. They're not going to jump through the hoops. Mm -hmm. And well, that's why I think yeah. we're seeing, and that's why I think it explains DJI's rapid evolvement of the sensors. Because mm -hmm. they understand this, that mm -hmm. they don't want it to die before it gets going. Exactly. On a, on a enterprise level, especially. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very true. So um, I think, you know, the, the main difference between those two drones, the Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro, is the sensor, but you can see the mass effect that that sensor has now on the industry as a whole. You see that uh, it, the level of data. And the other thing too is, you know, people have said that 2017 is gonna be the year of drone data. 
mm-hmm. because we're going to have data that we've never seen before. And we, we're going to be able to solve problems that we didn't realize were problems before. We're going to be able to optimize workflows and systems in a level of efficiency we've never seen before. Right. Um, which if all that is true, the drone industry is going to explode. If it's not true, it's not going to explode. Okay. So for Steven's purposes though, and his, his question, um, Cell tower inspections is not going to be able to do with a four. And he alluded to that. I think he mm-hmm. understands that. So he's trying to figure out what he can do with a four. But it really comes down to maybe just going for larger scale videography and photography type jobs, like maybe dealerships. Yeah, can and you build a business off of Phantom? Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But can you do mapping? And, you know, the reason I mentioned the, the uh, cell towers is because he mentioned it. Right. And it was a great segue into this, this the big difference between those two drones. Right. So. Yeah. Very cool. Well, a lot of people are building businesses, like you just said, with the Phantom 4. It is doable, and it's not going to be too long if you kind of get on a good trajectory with your business before you're going to need to move up. But totally. But it's certainly something you can get started with. Totally, totally. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. If you're ready to turn your passion into profit, check out the book Living the Drone Life on Amazon. Buy it, leave it a review. I promise you will not find a more succinct source or formula on how to do just that, how to live the drone life, which for me is living the dream. I love to travel. My vlog coming out soon is going to talk all about that. Very excited. And I know I've been talking about it for quite a while. And my time, my timeline is sitting on my computer right now. So Awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening in. As always, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.